In parts 1 and 2, we saw how Margarita Sig wrote Margaret Heinrich Himmler and how they set up a home and a business using funds from the sale of her share of the Berlin Clinic. The Himmler couple had a daughter and then adopted a son, but Heinrich Himmler was not loyal to his wife, who he ignored and appeared only to visit on account of his daughter. Heinrich Himmler had two children by another woman who was 19 years younger than Margarita Himmler. Frau Himmler had kept a low profile when compared to other Nazi wives, but nonetheless she realised that she too could fear the wrath of the victims of her husband's crimes. Gemund, where the family house was, was liberated at the beginning of May 1945 by the 3rd US Army. The Himmler family had been living at the house called Lindenficht since 1934. Margaret and Gudrun had fled at the end of April 1945 as the Americans pushed towards Munich. US soldiers ransacked the big house, taking anything they could as souvenirs. It was probably the Americans who opened the safe and helped themselves to the contents. It's possible that they got help from one of the Himmler employees, who was still living on the sprawling grounds. As two soldiers left the house with their booty, they met an American intelligence officer who had heard of the discovery of Himmler's estate. By order of the Supreme Allied Commander Dwight D. Eisenhower, it was amongst his duties to obtain evidence for the planned criminal trials against the leadership of the Nazi regime. So he tried to persuade the two soldiers to hand over the material, and if they didn't want to hand it over voluntarily, at least to sell it to him. He successfully convinced only one of the GIs and received six notebooks containing the Himmler diaries from the years 1914 to 1924. The officer noted that these documents contain little useful for the forthcoming trial. Little is known about what happened to the second soldier's material after he took it with him. It included parts of Margaret Himmler's private diary, her NSDAP membership book and album with photos of their baby daughter Gudrun, a handwritten recipe book, household books, numerous private photos and negative of Heinrich's letters to his wife from the years 1927-1933 and from 1939 to 1945. Margarita Himmler was last in contact with her husband in April 1945 before she left Gemund with her daughter. Mother and daughter fled south. The reason why they fled south was because the Americans were advancing from the north and the west and the Soviets from the east. The area Margarita Himmler came from, near Bidgosht, was occupied, as were places where she may have found family, such as Stargard or Berlin. The route took her through Austria to the South Tyrol, and a route taken by many Nazi war criminals. Once things got a bit more organised, some could rely on the officers of certain people in the Catholic Church, but that would be later. Margarita Himmler, it would appear, needed to rely on SS officers who were also fleeing south. In view of the regard that they may have held for her husband, they would protect her, at least that is what she might have thought. So therefore she fled south with them into the German-speaking part of Italy, a part of Italy that had been granted to that country after World War I, a place she hoped she would find sanctuary and could possibly disappear into the crowd. This is the route she took, more or less. Of course, the motorway didn't exist then, but the mountains did, and it gives an idea of what it actually looked like. Accompanied by SS men, she and her daughter reached South Tyrol, where they both went into hiding in Bolzano. After the US Army liberated Bolzano in May 1945, captured SS men showed their loyalty to Himmler and the SS by revealing where Himmler's wife was hiding. On the 13th of May 1945, Margarita Himmler was arrested with her daughter. She was initially interned in Italy and then in France. She was questioned. During the interrogation, however, it became clear that her husband had kept her very much in the dark about what he was doing. During the Nuremberg trials, both mother and daughter were held in the Ludwigsburg 77 internment camp. Since they were not accused and their allies had no further use for them, mother and daughter were released from internment in November 1946. 
They were both initially accommodated in the Bödelwinkel Foundation Bethel in Bielefeld. This was, and still is, an institution that cares for people with disabilities, mental impairments, epilepsy, the elderly, those in need of care, the sick, young people with social problems and the homeless. Here, at this charitable institution, mother and daughter filled their days by weaving and spinning. The Himmler's board and lodging were partially financed through donations received by the foundation so that they had enough to keep them alive in modest comfort, although of course worlds apart from the luxury that they had enjoyed during the Third Reich. The foundation saw it in their remit to assist the needy. However, it would seem that Margarita Himmler did not show any gratefulness at all. Years later, in April 1962, in response to critical questions regarding Margarita Himmler's accommodation in the Bertelwinkel institution for around nine years, the institution's director, Friedrich von Bertelwinkel, said, It's very unfortunate that Margarita Himmler, during the time she stayed with us, remained in absolute delusion until she left us without thanks and went off with her brown cronies who have now gotten back on their feet. This cannot impress us in any way because we do not obey the command of Jesus in order to be able to tell some pious success stories afterwards. The Bertelwinkers Foundation had come under criticism. It seems that following the death of Friedrich von Bödelwinkel's father in the autumn of 1946, Nazi fugitives had been able to profit from the charity of an organisation which had previously attempted to assist its victims. The stay of the Himmlers with the foundation added to the controversy. There were allegations that mother and daughter were continuing to live a life of luxury at the foundation. On the 4th of June 1947, an article appeared in the European edition of the New York Tribune entitled Widow of Heinrich Himmler Lives Like a Gentlewoman. The presence of Margarita Himmler was difficult for other guests of the institution. Not only was she the former wife of the now openly hated Reichsfuhrer, but she continued to have the same bossy and domineering manner that she'd always had. Only now people were not jumping to satisfy her every wish, which, I suspect, could have made her even more aggressive. Margarita Himmler was initially denazified in Bielefeld in 1948 as a Category 3 offender. In 1950, she challenged this classification through a lawyer because her early Nazi Party membership was only nominal. Her high rank in the German Red Cross resulted from her membership since 1914 and she herself had not been in the spotlight as the wife of the Reichsführer SS, as had, for example, some other Nazi wives. Nevertheless, the denazification committee in Detmold did not revise her classification because she represented the goals of the National Socialist German Workers' Party and had approved of her husband's actions. Her lawyer then insisted in the following appeal process that she could not be held responsible for her husband's actions. On the 19th of March 1951, she was finally classified as a follower, Category 4. The verdict acknowledged that she was not responsible for her husband's crimes, but she had not distanced herself from them either. In addition, she had benefited from her husband's position in the Third Reich and the wealth that it brought. Since this denazification process, which began in the British occupation zone, was not recognised by the Bavarian Prime Minister Hans Erhardt, another denazification process was started out due to the unresolved question of ownership of her house in Gmund. Finally, on the 15th of January 1953 in Munich, she was classified as a beneficiary of the Nazi regime and thus Category 2 and, among other things, sentenced to 30 days of community service, the loss of pension rights and the right to vote was withdrawn. Her daughter left the institution and went to live in Munich in 1952. In the summer of 1954, Margarita Himmler moved out of the Bertelsfink institution and took a private room in Bertel. From autumn 1955, she lived with her sister Lydia in Hepen. There, they were joined by her adopted son, Gerhard. Towards the end of the war, he had enlisted with the Waffen-SS, aged only 16. 
He was taken prisoner by the Red Army and remained in Soviet captivity until October 1955. Now aged 27, he returned to Germany and his stepmother picked him up from the Friedland camp. I think he was in the same batch of returnees as Karl Heinz Pinch, who had been the adjutant of Rudolf Hess, and there's a link to the video I did on his life below. By the way, I need to point out that's only what I think. I can't prove that. Initially, he lived in their apartment as a late returnee, a classification reserved for those people who had either been detained as prisoners of war or came from areas now under Soviet occupation. This classification carried with it certain benefits when it came to seeking employment, amongst other advantages. In the spring of 1956, he moved to the eastern Lübeck district of Kuchnitz, became a driver and married Anne-Marie von der Ache. He worked for the local newspaper, the Lübecker Nachrichten. He remained in contact with his stepmother until the end of her life. His wife, Anne-Marie, died towards the end of the 1990s. He died in a nursing home in Solmitzstrasse in Lübeck, Kuchnitz, in December 2010. Margarita Himmler faded away from public attention as she got older. She spent her twilight years with her daughter in Munich. Gudrun Himmler had married Wolf Dieter Berwitz and she'd ceased to use her maiden name. It carried with her a certain stigma and as soon as she got a job she would get the sack when people found out who she was. She changed tactics and used a false name which allowed her to get a job in the typing pool of West Germany's intelligence organisation, the BND and that intelligence organisation failed to find out for two years who she was. Now unmolested by the press, Margarita Himmler lived out her final years in peace. She died in Munich on the 25th of August 1967, aged 74. Now let's return to Bydgoszcz in Poland where this story began. The main square in the city is dominated by the statues and monuments of those killed by the SS and the SS auxiliaries under the command of her husband. As a child, going to school here, she would have known this square well. Could she then have foreseen the death, destruction and suffering that her family would bring not only to this city but to all of Europe. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you found that interesting. I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours my time. I live in Poland and in Germany. I also upload sometimes on other days as well. If you want to know when I'm uploading or maybe doing a live broadcast, then you might want to subscribe. In the meantime, if you're interested in this subject, then you might want to see other videos that I've done related to the Second World War and I would suggest having a look at this video on Henrietta von Schirach. Thank you for the moment and all the best from me.